Thank you. 
आवाज पण येत नाही आता Okay. 
हो बघा मॅम एक गोष्ट सांगा ती आपली जी युनिफॉर्मची साडी आहे पंधरा ऑगस्टला घालायची त्याच्यावर रेडीमेड ब्लाऊज घातलं चालते ना ठीक आहे गुड आफ्टरनून एव्हरी वन वेलकम टू कपॅसिटी बिल्डिंग फोरम ऑफ एपीटीआय महाराष्ट्र स्टेट Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Capacity Building Forum of the PTI Maharashtra State. Good afternoon everyone. We will begin the program in next 5 minutes.
गुड आफ्टरनून बुरांडे सर कैन यू हियर मी गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून विनीता हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून विनीता या शेल वी बिगिन या और यू शुड वेट फॉर थ्री फोर मिनट्स मोर फॉर मोर पीपल टू ज्वाइन इन Yeah, we will allow two, three minutes. No? Okay. As it is, the timing is two thirty. We will start at at two thirty. Okay, no problem. Good afternoon, sir. I think, sir, uh, that thing is not on. मैडम गीता मैडम तुम म्यूट है तुम विल बिगिन इन नेक्स्ट टू थ्री मिनट्स यस यस वेदर वी आर एबल टू रीच टूरस Yes, yes. Good morning, sir. Is right. there, but uh... I think he is not able to hear us probably. I don't know. Okay. Hope all both the speakers have also joined. I am able to see Doctor Aragade. Yes. Uh, I don't know about Dias, sir. Just keep informed, Dias, sir. Also. Okay. Yes. At least I am not able to see him. Let's check it. नमस्कार सर नमस्कार कैन यू हेलो हेलो यस यस सर यस कैन यू लिसन टू मी यस नाउ वी आर एबल टू हियर यू प्रॉपरली जस्ट माय वीडियो आई एम एक्चुअली सेटिंग ओके ओके नो प्रॉब्लम गिव मी सम टू मी वी आर एबल टू सी यू बट वी आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेदर यू आर एबल टू हियर सो मच सो या So your volume is very low. Yeah. Hello. Huh. Good afternoon, Burandi sir. Yes, just give me one minute. गीता मैडम एकदा डायस सर आठवन कर फोन कर
yes geeta madam i think uh, we should start yes uh, good afternoon everybody good afternoon sir yeah good afternoon sir my voice yes sir okay. yes sir thank you for uh, yeah, your time you. time sir and uh, thanks for joining yeah, yeah. thank you maka aragane welcome ब्रह्माच्युत शंकर प्रभृति a very good afternoon to one and all i dr geeta bhagwat am delighted to welcome you all to the webinar unfolding er 2020 on behalf of capacity building forum of apti maharashtra state and dy party university school of pharmacy we have already took to taken the blessings of goddess saraswati who also happens to be the symbol for apti maharashtra in this webinar for diploma pharmacy teachers mainly across maharashtra we will understand the different aspects of er 2020 that is educational regulations pertaining to diploma syllabus I would now invite Ms. Vinita Khan Bilkar to say a few words about Capacity Building Forum of APTI Maharashtra. To begin with, I will introduce Dr. Vinita Khan Bilkar in one or two sentences. Dr. Vinita is currently working as an associate professor in statistical analysis at Bharti Vidyapeeth. She has experience of twenty years in the field of education. she has still till now guided around 21 students in at pg level and has got has published around 50 papers in international and national journals she has been executive committee member of apti maharashtra state and a part of capacity building forum of apti maharashtra state in that capacity i would invite vinita to say a few words uh, to guide you on thank you geeta madam Uh, passionate ed passionate educationist and uh, our teacher dr mahesh burande sir dr rakesh somani sir principal dr dy patil university school of pharmacy navi mumbai and also president of apti maharashtra state a resource person for today's webinar dr prashant argade sir head of pharmacy department government polytechnic jalga and dr dias head of department government college of pharmacy karaj and all the distinguished teachers good afternoon to all of you It is with immense pleasure and great honor that I extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to each one of you for this webinar. We all are aware of the uh, various activities what APTI Maharashtra State is conducting. Capacity Building Forum is one of the subcommittee of APTI MS branch, and we are fortunate to have Dr. Mahesh Burande sir as the mentor for the same. Capacity Building Forum stands as a testament to our commitment to excellence in education. we firmly believe that teachers are the backbone of any thriving educational system they are not only the facilitators of knowledge but also the architects of the dreams hence investing in their continuous development is of utmost importance by providing the right tool and resources we aim to empower them to bring out the best in our students inspire their passion for learning and ignite their curiosity to explore new horizons throughout this capacity building forum we dwell into various training programs workshops interactive sessions designed to enhance the skills and expertise of teachers the educational education regulation 2020 for diploma course in pharmacy was released in october 2022 and it explains in detail about the standard of education for qualification as a pharmacist including minimum qualification for admission to the course duration of the course syllabus mode of examination minimum marks for passing nature and duration of practical training and all other things 
So today we gather here with a shared vision and purpose to understand the same in detail, to empower our diploma teachers and to equip them with knowledge and skills necessary to shape the future of our students. As we embark on this transformative journey together, I, I encourage you all to actively participate, to engage in meaningful discussions and to embrace new perspectives. Remember that our collective efforts today will have a profound impact on the generations of the learners to come. So we are very lucky to have two resource persons for today. So once again, I warmly welcome all of you. Let us embark this journey of growth and learning hand in hand as we strive to make a difference in the lives of our students. Thank you. Gita, madam, you are mute. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Vinita, madam. As she correctly said, we are going to empower the diploma students through this webinar and we need active participation so that uh, in the end, there will be a quiz in which we will be asking you questions pertaining to the webinar or the two sessions which we have today. Uh, after this, I invite Dr. Rakesh Somani, sir, the president of APTI Maharashtra State, uh, to say a few words. Under his able constant able and constant guidance, APTI Maharashtra State has recently received Best State Branch Award, Pan India. We also are blessed to work under his able leadership here at D.Y. Patil University School of Pharmacy. Being a perfectionist himself, he ensures excellence in whatever work he does. So over to you. Yeah, very good afternoon to one and all present on this platform. Our teacher, the mentor, guide, philosopher, Dr. Mahesh Burande, sir. Today's speakers, Dr. Prashant Aragade, sir, Dr. Dias my fellow colleague at uh, Capacity Building Forum and the Executive Committee member of APTI Maharashtra, Dr. Vinita Khanvilkar, my colleague and a senior faculty member, one of the active faculty members at D.Y. Patil University School of Pharmacy, Dr. Geeta Bhagwat, all the faculty members who are on the, present on this platform today. I welcome all of you on this uh, webinar uh, titled as Unfolding ER 2020. Uh, dear teachers, uh, APTI Maharashtra state is striving hard uh, for the profession as well as professionals. And uh, under the guidance of many stalwarts, including uh, Burande sir, our activities are typically focused on the welfare of the teaching community. So when I say welfare, it is not only about the monetary welfare per se, but it, uh, it is also the intellectual welfare. So we want that and that's why if you see the name of this forum, that is capacity building, we want that our faculty members should enhance their capacity in such a way that the direct benefit goes to the important stakeholder of the education, that is the students. And uh, APTI Maharashtra, because of its activities in the entire year, has backed this best branch award in the, uh, the very first year of its existence in this particular uh, new body. Uh, very soon, APTI Maharashtra is coming up with its annual progress report. Uh, maybe uh, on or before 15th of August, we will be releasing our first annual progress report. What we have done in past one year under the banner of APTI, that will be, uh, you know, conveyed to all the teachers across the state of Maharashtra. I believe that such a kind of seminars or workshops, uh, when they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, planned as well as when they are being delivered by the experts like Dr. Aran and Dr. Dias, I'm sure that they will be beneficial to you. And ultimately that will help we as a faculty to grow in future as well as best, uh, I mean, do our best for the profession. Once again, I congratulate the Capacity Building Forum under the leadership of uh, Dr. Vinita Khanvilkar for planning such kind of activities and look forward that such kind of activities continues in years to come. Uh, I also appreciate our coordinator at D.Y. Patil University School of Pharmacy, Dr. Gita Bhagwat, for her initiative and taking this activity further. I thank both the speakers from their busy schedule. They have, uh, you know, agreed to deliver the talk today. Thank you so much, Dr. Aragade and Dr. Dias. And thanks to Burande sir as well. And look forward to hear from Burande sir for his guidance in the words of wisdom. Gita, madam, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
uh, of course, as you correctly said that this, this type of capacity building uh, forums will definitely give a platform to all the uh, diploma or young teachers, you can say, which will improve them intellectually or it is for the intellectual welfare. Uh, I'm sure they will take, uh, take this uh, opportunity to get themselves empowered. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rakesh sir. Now I'm really, really very privileged to invite the mentor of Capacity Building Forum of Maharashtra State, Professor Dr. Mahesh Burande sir. Uh, he will be enlightening you all on NEP 2020 today. But uh, to give his introduction, actually, it's uh, really, really <laughs> difficult to introduce such a tall and uh, talented personality in such uh, less time. But still, nevertheless, I'll try to do that. Uh, first of all, Namaste uh, Burande sir, he is my teacher as well. Dr. Mahesh Burande sir has got over 40 years of rich experience in pharmacy profession as pharma consultant, trainer and academician. Uh, he has worked as a pharmaceutical consultant and trainer for more than 100 pharmaceutical companies in India as well as abroad. He has, he has been receiving a lot of accolades from different organizations. He has been elected as president of IPA Pune branch Vice President of IPA Community Pharmacy Division, President of Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India. He is a recipient of Best Young Pharmacy Teacher Award back then in 1997-98. Um, he is the Indian Pharmaceutical Association. He has won a fellowship award in 2002. Uh, he has been given award as a doyen of pharmacy profession in 2002 again by Drug Inspectors Welfare Association. He has received a Lifetime Achievement Award for purely from Purely uh, Chemist Forum, and he is the recipient of prestigious IAPST Pharmaceutical Professional of the Year 2011. So the list is really very long. Again, to name a few, he was awarded the Performer Award for Pharma Skill Development in India at 70, 72nd IPC. Under his leadership as Honorary Director, Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, uh, has conducts 20 job oriented pharmaceutical management diploma for pharma skill development, which are highly recognized by pharma industry as well as profession. So, correctly, uh, he has been, you know, selected as the mentor for capacity building uh, forum of APTI Maharashtra State. And I'm sure everyone will take, you know, his blessings as well as his advice and his guidance to go forward. Over to you, Burandi, sir. Thanks, uh, Dr. Gita, Dr. Vinita. Both of our, both of our, my students at Purna College of Pharmacy. And today, happy to note that they have taken teaching profession in their heart and contributing to inspire the students in big way. And also associated with Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of Maharashtra as well as the India. First, let me congratulate Dr. Rakesh for getting the best Maharashtra APTI branch award. This branch award at the national forum. And let me tell you that even next year also, I think APTI Maharashtra will receive the best branch award because of your activities and because of your involvement. Uh, capacity forum is built to build the capacity of every pharmacy teacher across Maharashtra. And happy to note that more than 120 teachers are participating today. Uh, the best speakers are provided, Dr. Prashant Ragade and Dr. Rimit Dias. Uh, along with uh, them, I have worked some time when uh, I was working at Satara. And uh, I think uh, they will contribute much more than what I can speak today uh, because of the ER 2020, uh, which they are involved in implementing and taking the lead from the government college of pharmacy. But uh, I have been requested to talk more on uh, NEP uh, 2020 or uh, new education policy to start uh, the actually the main batsman as a speaker, Dr. Remit, as well as Dr. Prasan. I think year 2020, uh, which we are going to implement, we already started implementing 
a lot of things from NEP uh, which we have taken and we are going to demonstrate in front of the students. Now, when I actually see NEP, uh, that is new education policy, I think new means something innovative. New means, I think, something which we have to change. New something, it should be a different one. And there is a, some purpose for making something new uh, because the old things which will not run uh, throughout the life. We have to change. And on that aspect, I think education policies are changing. So when we come to the word education, uh, that is the knowledge. And many times I have said that knowledge means jnan. So when we talk about the jnan or the knowledge, it is just like an ocean. How much we wanted to take it, it will not actually over and it will grow year-wise, it will grow day-wise and the contribution will be much more as far as the knowledge is considered in every aspect of every field. But when we say Jnan, out of that Jnan, I think we are concentrating on the Jnan, that is the science. And the science of pharmaceutical sciences, uh, what we belong. I think uh, many things are happening at present. And that's why the new education policy will be important to implement on that line. So science is important. And after the science, it comes uh, the Antaradnyan, that is the technology. And we belong to the side of technology. Uh, let me tell you, at JSTM University, we have invited Mr. Sanjay Gorana, uh, the vice president of Tripla recently. And he said that 70% of the employees in Tripla in production or operation, they are engineers. Because the engineering technology is dominating today in the manufacturing. And he said, uh, we have to teach them GMT, means there are special programs which are conducted to the engineers to understand the good manufacturing practices. While reverse is the case that we teach GMP to the, our students right from third year to the final year BFAM, but engineering aspect is taught less, although we have the subject on that line. So while discussing with him, he said technology is going very fast, computerization is happening, uh, digitalization is happening. And I think we have to educate our student on that line so that they can contribute much more. So we have to make today the pharmaceutical engineer, uh, then the contribution of pharmacies will be much more. So technology, and I think that is the tantra what we say. And after all, I think the last one which I wanted to say is atma -dnyan. When you receive that atma -dnyan, that what I wanted to do in pharmacy profession, what I wanted to contribute in this pharmacy profession, I think the whole NEP is available for you, new education policy is available for you to implement right from the first thing. So what is that first thing? The first thing that if I am a lecturer or an assistant professor, how my lecture, 45 minutes lecture, will contribute to the student in developing their Jnan as well as Vijnan as well as the technology, and then again, Atmajnan, whatever they will receive, and the skill which they will actually, which we will pass on to them in that 45 minutes is important. Each 45 minutes, the valuable time is given to us as a teacher to contribute in their life. And for that, we have to modify ourselves as far as the NEP is considered. Uh, we are considering today that out of 45 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, teachers should actually deliver one to one, maybe through the PowerPoint or maybe talking to them. Then 10 minutes should be a discussion in that case, whatever you wanted to do with the case study or any example or any video which you wanted to show. And then I think uh, the next five minutes which you can devote, how much they understood, how much they can actually again redevelop and then we can stamp them that they have really actually gained the knowledge. Maybe conducting some uh, 10 minutes multiple objective tests every lecture is the possibility that we can develop the student. Forget about whether I'm going to complete the syllabus or not. That is not important. What most of the student, most of the actually industry people are telling us. They are telling us that whether you have delivered the concepts or not. And once the concept is delivered, everything is available on the Google. The role of a teacher to develop the concept. And I think in 45 minutes, if we develop that concept, I think that will contribute much more. Even coming to the NEP, that is the experiential learning that is the most important part which we should contribute 
and experience many times you will not get into the class may not get even in the practical hall but we have to actually send the students outside to the pharmacy world maybe the medical shop if they are the dpharm students or maybe the bpharm student interested in community pharmacy or hospital pharmacy can we send them every week two to four hours in any medical shop to understand what's happening in the medical shop that is the experiential learning so that they will come to know what's happening in the pharmacy field and some credit should be given to this experiential learning what nap is talking about so small small thing which i am going to suggest which is practical uh, practicable or it can be a practice in every pharmacy college so that we can develop the skillful pharmacy then uh, i think uh, many aspects which they are talking and that is the certificate courses although we are going to give them a diploma or a degree but along with that may be a 3 month certificate program uh, identifying through swot that is strength opportunity threat as well as uh, 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 the weakness of that student and asking them that which career they wanted to choose right from second year i think that will contribute much more uh, recently we conducted uh, the program uh, of uh, mr amaya gavaskar who stood first in gpat as well as the niper exam and when he was invited at jstm university where i am working as a director i think he told that sir right from second year i decided that what i wanted to do and uh, he said i started working for the gpat exam and niper exam uh, right from the second year and uh, with consultation with many seniors as well as the experts in the industry i decided that even i am actually standing first at the niper or gpat my career will be mba pharmaceutical management at niper and i am going to choose uh, the line which will be the product management line a sales and marketing line i will work for 6 months in the field and i want wanted to contribute much more in the sales and marketing the student who is coming first deciding in the second year what he wanted to do suggest that we should actually start this practice in the minds of the student to identify what they are looking for in final year we farm if they are asking us or the parents now what i should do i think it's a failure of a teacher in that case that we have not done the exercise properly so nep says that identify the strength inspiring maybe to become an entrepreneur contribution contribution will be much more then i think other aspect that every week one guest lecture from the industry or maybe from the expert person maybe from hospital maybe from medical store if you organize if they are the dpharm student that will contribute much more because the practical gap whatever we have that can be reduced and some exercises what we do i think uh, discussing some case studies what's happening at present in the industry maybe in the newspaper if you talk something about the pharma and some toxicity has happened i think discuss that toxicity recently you know uh, with many expectorant it happened so discuss that what that uh, polyethylene glycol will do or maybe the purity of glycol will do uh, so that the understanding will be much more that what experiment we are doing so as a teacher in every subject what i actually teach and whatever the practical side do what is the application to the pharmaceutical profession and industry if we start talking to the student the interest will be created much more today google is providing everything videos are available but what to select the best and deliver to the student i think that will be the role of nap and developing his personality will be important asking him to participate in each and every activity right so that he can understand the life otherwise yesterday's case uh, of uh, actually nitin desai everybody knows that he has actually created a dream what he was thinking of but because of some financial management lacking ultimately left the world so trying to make every student as a good human being by adding the values whatever he likes will be the role of nep 2020 pula desh pande has rightly suggested that your profession will give you the bread and butter your profession will take you to some height in your profession but understanding the hobby as far as your life is considered and giving some time for that hobby where you get maximum satisfaction that will understand the meaning of life to the student and once the meaning of life is understood i think all success all respect all reward and satisfaction and again to contribute further to the society further to the profession further to the nation will be better and that is the actually the whole thing about nep 2020 i think 
the biggest actually platform which is available for all the teachers to implement and that is the role i think all of us should perform so wishing you all the best because uh, when i said geeta that i can talk and uh, speak on this topic today because i'm involved in practicing it uh, right from 1990 but uh, 15 minutes are given to me main batsmen are dr prashant and dr actually remit so wishing you all the best and i'm extremely happy that maharashtra apti state bank is doing extremely good work and whenever the time is available with me i will definitely come and contribute much more whatever i have gained from the pharmacy profession let me tell you pharmacy profession has given me everything what i was looking as my dream and the mission and that's why respecting this profession loving this profession from my heart and contributing uh, whatever the way which i want to develop the profession and contribute thanks a lot dr geeta dr virita and dr rakesh thanks a lot thank you sir thank you sir it was really enlightening uh, to hear you after such a long time and uh, sir deciphered nep 2020 very well in very simple and a few words that it gives you um, opportunity to do what you want and we should instill this uh, in fact idea or this concept in the students mind right from the beginning Gita, madam uh, yeah that is our job so going forward are you able to hear me because there was some problem in the connection here no no we are able to hear you please proceed okay thank you sir so with this uh, thanking we will proceed with the session first session today's first session uh, dr prashant aragde we really thank you sir for accepting our invitation at such a short notice and um, i would like to introduce dr prashant aragde to you all he completed his graduation from ssdj college of pharmacy chandwad and completed his phd from dr mgr medical university chennai he has been associated uh, in his career with uh, different institutes such as K kbh sst institute of pharmacy malegao sitabai tithe college of pharmacy shirur and currently working with department of pharmacy government polytechnic jalga for past 11 years he has 23 research papers to his credit published in national and international journals and he also has a youtube video channel with around 10000 plus subscribers 6 lakh viewers and 140 videos so that is something uh, completely different what uh, the new generation pharmacy teacher is doing and which is really really appreciable uh, dr aragde i really appreciate you for that this is a different methodology you have taken up for uh, teaching the students which is really appreciable he has trained more than 5000 faculty as well online uh, teaching to various apps organized by department of pharmacy jalgaon uh, he has received a runner up prize in the paper presented in ai city sponsored national level seminar computational chemistry in anti cancer drug research he has also received many grants from ai city seminar grant msbt fdp grant ai city atal grant and ai more drop grant so various he is a recipient of various grants as well i welcome you sir dr prashant aragde sir uh, to deliver your session uh, let me make an announcement for all the participants that there will be a small quiz along with the feedback form at the end of both the sessions and we will ask you questions pertaining to whatever is delivered in the sessions so please be um, i mean you should be vigilant and you should listen to both the speakers properly and i think you also made that if 70% uh, marks they get in the quiz then only they are going to get certificate right so the teachers are going to become students here yeah they absolutely they are going because... to assess the students at the 70% level right right ठीक है या थैंक यू इफ यू स्कोर अंडर 70% देन ओनली यू विल गेट द सर्टिफिकेट दैट इज व्हाट सुमन इज वेरी सेइंग ओके डॉक्टर आरागडे ओवर टू यू प्लीज ओवर टू यू सर ओके गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल द टीचर्स 
those who are present in this online meet at the outset i am really thankful to capacity building forum apti maharashtra state branch and the dy patil school of pharmacy navi mumbai for providing this platform for the diploma pharmacy teachers so today i am sharing some my experience with uh, all the respected faculty members for the effective implementation of the er 2020 already we are aware about uh, this er 2020 was implemented and we are implementing the same through the msbt last year the msbt has published the different types of formats for the effective implementation of our syllabus so most of you have used that format and you have utilized it very effectively even though i will try up to my best to share my uh, expertise or you can say my experience how you can able to maintain this format very effectively and after maintaining of these formats how it will be effectively useful for the delivery of our course or you can say the delivery of our syllabus for our subjects so let's starts with the uh, msbt format already you know that there are total 17 formats are there which has uh, published by the msbt which was designed by the uh, subject experts assigned the assignment given to the subject experts by the msbt and approved by the msbt and now everyone has to use that particular format and i think you all are now uh, aware about how to maintain that particular formats when we say about the ph1 that is the teaching plan which one is very uh, important one for us to prepare a teaching plans at the beginning of our academic year and we have to maintain it throughout the year and when we talk about the ph2 to ph13 it is very uh, well known format for us the only thing is that the newer concept for us is the assignments and the field visit and now all we are now well aware about how to maintain the assignments uh, mark sheets and assignments assessment typical format as well as for the field visit reports so let's starts with the teaching plan so this is the typical format for the teaching plan isn't it so i have prepared it for the pharmacy law and ethics for just a uh, uh, demonstration purpose we have to start with the course outcomes dear faculty members already the pharmacy council of india in er 2020 documents they have mentioned the course outcomes for each and every course let me clear one thing the course here itself stands for the subjects because now we are at uh, we are implementing the outcome based education that is obe and in obe concepts or in obe philosophy everywhere where whenever there is course word is comes it indicates the subjects now they are not using the subject for the mentioning the subjects so just course outcomes is nothing but the subject outcomes means what will the students will learn after completion of that particular subjects after completion of that particular syllabus what they are going to gain so you have to mention that course outcomes in teaching plans and no doubt you will be able to prepare it very uh, effectively with the chapter numbers and allocated hours already the pisa has given the allocated hours then relevant co means you have to map now here the mapping of the co with your topics so if after completion of topic number 1 which co is going to be fulfilled which course outcome going to be attained by the students you have to mention the number here only and then you have to make the plan so at the beginning you have to make the plan and after actual execution after actual executions you have to mention the dates here and which teaching methods you have utilized you have to mention likewise so i have prepared one plan for demonstration purpose only so here i have taken the chapter number 1 okay allocated hours is 2 as far as the er 2020 is concerned now relevant co that is co1 is going to map with the topic number 1 okay so after completion of the topic number 1 the students will be able to gain the course outcome number 1 that is the describe the history and evolution of the pharmacy law in india etc etc okay so i have planned it okay this is my planning and actual execution is going on 
you can say like that so there might be a chances of the difference between the planned date and and the actual executions yes it might be happens due to some official works or due to some personal work you can't able to take that particular lectures on that particular date so that planning may be some get differ so that's why we have uh, we have to maintain the actual executions how many lectures are required to fulfill or complete that particular chapter you have to mention here you have to mention over here and then you have to write it down the uh, what teaching methods you are used for the delivery of that particular subject suppose i have used the interactive boards i have used the powerpoint presentations i have developed one model course i have uploaded the some materials on the model course and students may have the access of that particular model course so they will get the study material from there so this is how you can maintain the ph1 now dear faculty members i am going to share one uh, interesting document with you so that you can able to map or you can able to maintain this dates very proper even you can able to do the calculation of the attainment of this co1 or you can say the attainment of the course outcomes or you can able to create your own question bank for the attainment of that particular course outcomes because many times we have seen that in many whatsapp groups the most of the people ask about the uh, just share the question bank and share the uh, study material etc etc but dear faculty members if you are prepared your ph1 that is the teaching plan very properly along with the uh, whatever the method i am going to share with you if you follow it i think that it will be really useful for you for the effective delivery of your course isn't it so i am going to share the things with you that's why i have given the uh, subtitle for my, my slide is the best practices and the strategies for the maintaining the these formats very effectively so what are these best practices or the strategies so step number 1 is nothing but you have to prepare the sectional wise specification table i think most of the faculty members are now aware about the msbt already displayed the specification table for each and every course for our diploma course in pharmacy okay so this specification table which was published by the msbt it is for the annual patterns or for the annual examinations that is the chapter wise you can say the chapter wise weightage how many marks the assigned for that particular chapters isn't it pci has assigned or allocated the hours for that particular chapters and now msbt has given the extra information to us by providing the specification table so dear faculty member if you want to maintain the uh, ph1 or if you want to uh, deliver your course very effectively if you have make a plan of your sectional wise specification table definitely it will useful for you and after making a sectional wise specification table i am going to say you how it will be prepared you have to make the question paper profile now these terms might be were new for the most of the faculty member many autonomous institutes many dim universities has aware about this qpp that is question paper profile how are going to uh, design the question paper what are the profiles what are the uh, weightage for the different chapters for the sectional examination even though they have prepared and why can't we use that particular uh, concept in our day to day or in our regular sectional examinations if you wish you can use but it will really help you to cover your syllabus within the stipulated times and you can able to give the proper weightage to each and every chapters as far as the msbt specification tables are concerned so dear faculty members let's starts with the first practice that is sectional wise specification table so for that the step number 1 is you have to distribute your syllabus sectional wise means what are the syllabus for the sectional number 1 sectional number 2 and sectional number 3 generally we have the syllabus for the 75 hours isn't it prescribed by the pci so we have we are going to conduct the three sectionals isn't it so for each sectional try to cover the syllabus of 25 hours isn't it so 25 into 3 is 75 so first step is you have to divide your sectional by its syllabus first 
and try to divide in a such a way that each sectionals may have near to 25 hour syllabus. Now, someone may have the questions in their mind. If suppose uh, some chapters carrying the more weightage and more hours, if it is not fit into the 25, it's okay. Let it be. It might be the 26 or 27 hours for the uh, particular sectionals and 23 or 24 hours for the next session. So, okay, it's okay, no problem. It is not compulsory that you have to make your 25, 25 hours, but it should be near to 25 so that the equal or uniform distributions will be there. And then dear faculty members, you can go for the assignment of the marks, assign the marks to the each topic selected for that particular sectional, depending on the MSBT specification tape. How, how I will show you how to do that. Okay, is it clear? First step is what? You have to divide or you have to distribute the whole syllabus in the three phases. That is near about 33% syllabus you have to divide or you can say the 25 hours syllabus keep for the first sectional, next 25 for the next sectional and next 25 for the last sectional. And you are very well aware about that. The, already the PISA has given the allocated hours for each and every chapters. So it's very easy to uh, divide your syllabus in sectional wise. And then take a reference of the MSBT specification table and you can now assign the marks for each and every topics for the sectionals. Okay, so let me show you that first, the MSBT specification table. Here, for reference, I have taken the specification table for pharmacy ethics and law. Okay. So now this is the chapter number one, or you can say the unit number one, let it be. As per the PCI, the two hours is allocated for the chapter number one. A distribution of theory marks for the three marks, maximum three marks is assigned for this chapter number one. Now here you can see R, U and A. These are the Bloom's taxonomy levels. And the next session will be totally on the how to design the good question paper by using this uh, Bloom's taxonomy. So you will be get the more idea in the upcoming sessions uh, the, will be delivered by the Dr. Dyer sir. So R represents the remember level, U represents the understanding level and A represents the apply level. So out of three marks, the two marks should be given at R level and one mark should be asked at the understanding level, like that. So you have to remember that these three marks is for chapter number one. And now, as I, I have told you that you have to distribute your syllabus in a such a way that it might be having the 25 hours for the first section. Now I have seen immediately, I have seen that the chapter number three is of 23 hours. So 23 plus two is a 25. So immediately I have distributed so my first sectional syllabus for this subject is for chapter number one and chapter number three. I will skip the chapter number two for a while because I have to complete the 25 hours for the first sectional. And now you can see here the three marks is assigned for the chapter number one and the 27 marks is assigned for the chapter number three. So now total marks is of 30 marks. Total marks is now of 30 marks as far as the MSBT specification tables are concerned. Okay. As far as MSBT specification tables are concerned. So I think now you will get the idea how to distribute the syllabus in sectional wise. I have seen, I have shown you that uh, chapter number one and chapter number three will be taken for the first sectional because chapter number one having the two hours and chapter number three having the 23 hours. So 23 plus two is 25. So my first step is over. That is the distribution of syllabus for the sectional exam. Okay. Now the next and most important point is now the creation of sectional wise specification table. Now in front of you now, I have prepared one specification table and similarly the format already given by the MSBT means I have shown you. So this is the MSBT format, okay, of the specification table. I have dropped this R, U, A level. I have directly taken 
the teaching hours and the total ones. Okay. So serial number, or you can say the unit number, unit title, teaching hours as per the PCI or MSBT. Now total marks assigned as per the MSBT. So you can directly take it from the MSBT specification table. Now it's total is 30. Okay. And total teaching hours for the first sectional is 25 hours. Now question is that now how to assign the marks for the sectional examination for that particular chapter. So dear faculty member, I would like to ask one question to you. You can reply in a chat box. Okay. You can reply it in a chat box. Our sectional question papers having how many marks? 40, including uh, options or excluding options? Excluding, okay, including, okay. So if you want to include the options, then how it, for 48 marks, very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. Chetan Jain, sir, you are the, you are the first to give this answer. Thank you very much. Ashwini Bankar, ma'am, that's good. It's not 50, ma'am, it's uh, 48. Hmm? Okay, it's 48. That's good. It's 48. Now you can see here, I have taken the total marks is 48 for the sectional. Now it's very simple mathematical calculation now. We want to distribute the marks out of 48. We have total 30 marks. How these 30 marks will come? Already I have shown you that 3 marks is assigned for the chapter number 1. 27 mark is assigned for the chapter number 2. And just I have um, make the addition that is 30. So out of 30, out of 33 marks is assigned for the chapter number 1. Now we want to set a question paper for 48 marks. So out of 45, how much it is? If for 30 marks, it is 27, okay. So for 48, how much it is? So just to do the simple mathematical calculations and you will get this, this answer. Now, while doing this calculation, you might be plus one or plus two to make a just a decimal because sometimes it may come into the decimal answers. So you might be go to the next integer or just go back to the previous integer. So you will get these uh, figures that is for five marks, and for, 40, for 43 marks. So 5 plus 43 is 48. So this is how you will get the sectional wise specification table. So step number one is you have to divide your syllabus sectional wise. You have to write it down the total marks assigned as per the MSBT specification table for this uh, particular chapter. And then you have to calculate or you have to assign the marks for that particular chapter for sectional examination. Remember dear faculty, for sectional examination for sectional examination, not for the annual. This is for the annual. Three marks is for the annual. 27 mark is for the annual. But we are not going to set the paper for annual. We are going to set the question paper for the sectional examination. And you all are aware about the sectional examination must have in the questions of 48 marks, including the options. That is question number one for 15 marks. Question number two for 15 marks and question number three for 10 marks, that is total 40 marks, excluding the options. If you include the options, then question number one is for. Okay, Yogesh sir, uh, why you why should we take 48 marks for sectional? Uh, yes, same thing I am going to uh, explain. For question number one, you have to ask the four questions out of four, three has to solve by the student. So four into five for 20 marks, including options. So 20. Question number two is for 18 marks. That is, there are total six questions for the three marks, but students has to solve. Student has to solve the five questions. So six into three is 18. So 18 for the second question. And question number three is compulsory. That is the 10. So 20 plus 18 plus 10 is 48. So you have to draft a paper in a such a way that 
your question paper should carry the 48 marks. That's why I have taken the 48. And these marks, that is 3 and 27, we have taken from the MSBT specification table. MSBT specification tables are available on the MSBT websites. Okay. If you are unable to find it, just ping, ping me. I will send it to you. No issue. So this is how you can convert the total marks assigned as per the MSBT for the annual examination to the total marks assigned for the sectional examination. Now you will have the idea now. That is the five marks for the question, chapter number one and 43 marks for the chapter number two. Okay. Now next step is the creation of question paper profile. It is not compulsory, dear faculty member, but if you are able to do that, it will be really useful to you to set a good question paper along with you have to complete your content at that particular period of hours. So already you know that already I have given answers to the Yogesh first lesson that question number one is for 20 marks, question number two is for 18 marks and question number three is for 10 marks. Now dear faculty members, just see how to prepare this question paper profile. It is very easy to that. Okay. So for that purpose, you again go back for the sectional wise specification table. You must have the sectional wise specification table in front of you while creating the question paper profile. Why I am going to say. Now see here, the total marks assigned for this chapter is three as far as the MSBC's, MSBT specification table is concerned. Three marks is assigned. If for that chapter, the three marks is assigned, so definitely the, the questions for five marks will not ask for that particular chapter. Questions for five marks in annual examination will not ask for that particular chapter. Question may be asked for the three marks or may be asked for the one mark each in the question number three. So if you Keep this thing in your mind while creating this question paper profile. So question number one for chapter number one is zero marks. Okay. Question number one for chapter number one is zero marks. Are you getting my point? Why? Because for chapter number one, only the three marks is assigned by the MSBT for annual examination. So there might be very less chance. I am saying the very less chance because it totally depends on the question paper setter and moderator. That's why I am not confident, 100% sure that. But I am much more confident that or very much sure about the, there might be a chance to ask one question at three number point for three marks. Okay. So for question number one, you can assign zero marks. Now, total how many marks assigned for the sectional is five. So we can ask one question at question number two, that is for three marks and two questions in question number three for two marks. So three plus two is equal to five. So while drafting the question paper, you have to keep the syllabus in front of you for the chapter number one and ask one questions in question number two and two questions in question number three, so total of five marks. So this is how you can create the question paper profile. Now, next point is, uh, next chapter, remaining chapter is question number, uh, chapter number three. It is assigned, 43 marks is assigned for the sectional examination. 43 marks is assigned for the sectional examination. Okay. 43 marks is assigned for the sectional examination in this way. Here is 43. So for annual, it is 27. So might be there is chances of asking of the five marks questions for these chapters. So you can now assign here because all chapters is over. Now you have to ask the five marks questions for the 20 marks. So you have to ask for the 20 marks for the chapter number three. That is the four questions. Four into five is equal to 20. Okay. Now, here, if you subtract 18 from 3, sorry, 3 from 18, then you will get the 15. So you have to ask the five questions from chapter number 3 in question number 5 sub-questions. So 5 into 3, you will get 15. And now you can subtract 2 from 10, so it will remain in the 8. So this will become your question paper profile for chapter number three. 
20 plus 15 plus 8 is 43. And if you do the addition of 20, 18, and 10 is a 48. So likewise, you can able to create the question paper problem. Now, if you have this sectional wise specification table with you and the question paper profile ready with you, it is very easy to draft or to set the sectional question paper. So already the equal weightage will be the given. Equal means uh, whatever the weightage given by the MSBT or the PCI, that weightage will be the remain as it is. So there will be a no chances of the giving the more weightage to the or maximum weightage to that particular chapters and very less weightage for the another chapter. There are very less chances. Okay. So if these two tables are available with you, definitely you will be able to develop a good question paper. Now how to develop the good question papers? The next session will be uh, planned for the same. So I am not going to uh, talk on that particular aspects, but definitely if you have the sectional wise syllabus with you and the question paper profile for each sectional with you, it will really help you. So I am going to show you how it will be work. Okay. Just see here, I have prepared it for the uh, pharmacy law and ethics. This time I have taken the different subjects because many times the many uh, teachers, when they have attended my session, they have seen that I have taken and I am talk lots of uh, talking on the pharmaceutical chemistry. So this time I am just trying to be a talk on the different uh, subjects. That's why I taken the, some different subjects for the example purpose. So pharmacy law and ethics, this is for the first sectional. So first section is for the 25 hours. Okay. So this is, this is the question paper profile for the first sectional. And now go to the for the second sectional exams. So now these are the some chapters. These are the teaching hours prescribed by the PCI or the MSBT for the 25 marks. Sorry, for the 25 hours. So my second sectional uh, plan is also ready with me. So I am going to uh, complete that particular chapters in the second sectional examinations. These are the marks assigned by the MSBT for the annual examinations. And I have converted it into for the sectional examinations. Based on this, I have prepared this specification table or you can say the question paper profile for the second sectional examination. So chapter number 2 to 10, weightage of marks for the sectional examination. So you have to take it from here and just divide it. While dividing, just focus here. Just focus here. Okay. So you have to choose a chapter, those who are having the more than five or five marks. Okay. You have to just focus over here during the specification table. How many marks are assigned by the MSBT? If that marks is more than five, it means that there is a chances, the big questions or long answer type of questions may be asked from that particular chapter. See here, five marks, seven marks and six marks. It means that there is a chance, there is a chance that the long answer type of questions or question number one may be asked from that particular chapter. So while preparing this question number one question paper profile, you have to keep this thing in your mind. Okay. So while observing the MSBT specification table, you have to find that particular chapters that chapter must having the five marks or more than five marks. So that chapters is a very, very important for the question number one. Okay. Then you can remaining uh, give the remaining marks to the question number two and question number three. But while allocating the marks, you have to remember that the question number total should be 20. Question number two total should be 18. And question number three total should be the 10. At the same time, Question number one, two, and three for that particular chapter should not be more than that of the assigned the mass. For example, you can take the chapter number nine now. This is the chapter number nine, okay? So 11 marks is assigned. So I have given the two questions from the question number one and directly the one questions from the question number three. So total is 11, okay, no problem. So likewise, you can divide it for the further, the third sectional. Now for the first and Second sectional, the equal distribution is there. So remaining 25 hours syllabus is remaining for the third sectional. And just do the same 
write down the total marks assigned by the MSBT and assign for the sectional examination like and just go for the next that is the preparation of question paper program. Okay, this is how you can able to prepare the sectional wise the syllabus and the creation of question paper profiles. Okay, is it okay now? You can just say yes or no in chat box. Are you getting up to that, up to this point? Thank you very much for your reply. Yogesh sir, Punam sir, Punam ma'am, Sandhya ma'am, Ashwini ma'am. It is very difficult to take the names of each and every one, but they are sending the reply very fast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Your uh, session has been uh, really appreciated by people. Okay. Thank you. Very, very well. Okay. Now, point number three, the lesson or lecture plan, how it will be workful, useful for you. Respected faculty members, we are talking about the PH1. That is the teaching plan. The teaching plan is for the whole year. If you are start to maintain the lesson plan or lecture plan, Definitely, it will be useful to deliver the content very effectively and it will be really useful to you to plan your each and every lectures according to your teaching plan or you can say the yearly plan if you create the lesson plan. So, I am going to show you the one lesson plan with you. Okay, this is the one of the lesson plan created by me. So, this is the general information you can see here. So now that this is my lecture number one and the date of lecture is uh, 3 August 2023. That is yesterday's lectures. I was just yesterday, I have finished that particular lectures. Okay. So you have to first write down the topic name or you, you can say the unit name. Now, which subtopic is which points you are going to cover in that particular first lectures. Okay. Or that particular lectures. So that much of point will be covered in the lecture number one, which CO is relevant to that particular talk or with that particular subtalk. If after studying the general principles of law, the students will be able to get the CO number one given in the ER document or you, you have already mentioned it in the PH1. So you have to just mention here that CO number one is going to attain after completion of lecture number one. Okay. The next point is the lecture objective or you can say the lesson objective or lesson outcomes or le lecture outcomes. Okay. So at the end of this lecture, the students will be able to means after delivering or after completion of that particular lecture number one, which are delivered on 3rd of August, the students will be able to explain the general principles of law. Yes, definitely they will be able to do that. What tools I have used? I have to mention it here interactive board, PPT, PowerPoints, and any other things. Okay. What the different points I have covered? Actually, lectures details in point number six. I have given the introductions. I have mentioned some definitions. I have explained the general principles of law, and I have explained the pharmaceutical legislations like that. Now, the next and most important point is point number seven. That is the question map. Now you can see I have divided into the three parts. That is question number one, question number two, and question number three. As we have prepared the question paper profile and we know that the long answer questions is very difficult to create from this chapter number one. So I have make it blank. Instead of asking the long answer type of questions, I have asked the two different short answer type of questions. Okay, I will show you the again the question paper profile for the chapter number one. Okay, then you will get the idea. But now the short answer type of questions will be asked in question number two. So you have to create the questions based on the topic which you have covered in that particular first lecture. Whatever the content you have covered in the lecture number one, you have to just ask that particular questions in that section and give it these questions to the students. At the end of chapter, no problem. Or at the end of lectures, no problem. It totally depends on you. And now question number three, that is multiple choice of questions. You can derive as many as questions if you can, depending on the content which you have covered in the point number. 
that is on that particular lecture. So as far as the PCR MSBT specification table is concerned, this chapter is for the two lectures. So you have to create the two pages or two lesson plans for that particular chapters. You have to divide the syllabus in two lectures now. You have to complete one particular part in first lecture and particular part in second lecture, remaining part in second lecture. So this will help you to creation of question bank also. And that questions really depending on whatever the topic, whatever the content you are going to cover in that particular lecture. Now, once you finish the your chapter or your unit, already the date already mentioned here. So you have to just transfer or put that particular date in PH1. That is the teaching plan. Already we have discussed that. Because you have to make the yearly plan and actual executions you have to maintain regularly. When you all already completed, then you have to move. If you have this habit, definitely the students will get the more and more information about your content because you have planned it properly. Yes, I have to complete these general principles or chapter number one within two lectures. So I, ha I have to divide these chapters or the content of these chapters in two sessions or two lectures. Okay. So whatever the points I have to cover in lecture number one, you have to write it down on page number one. Whatever the points or whatever the contents are remaining, you have to take it for the next lecture. And then you have to create the lecture outcomes. You have to mention the what are the tools you are going to use, what actual points you have covered. And now you have to create a question bank for that particular lecture. So daily you can give the homeworks or you can give that particular questions after the end of your chapters. So this is how the use of the lesson plan. This is how the use of the lesson plan will be helpful to maintain this teaching plan. And once you complete your lectures, then you can put it here dates that lecture is completed. Okay. So if you maintain the PH1 along with the lesson plan, it will help you. If you maintain, if you're able to create a sectional wise distribution of syllabus, it will help you because at the beginning of each and every sectional, you will be able to announce, yes, dear students, these are our syllabus for the first section. This is the MSBT specification table marks given by the MSBT. Now you have to give the proper attention to that particular chapter because it is very important for us and, and then we are going to complete this in the five lectures or seven lectures like that and then make five or seven le lesson plan that for particular lectures and once you deliver the lectures you can write it down the the possible questions on that particular day because we have the that particular content in our brain in our knowledge so we will be able to get the things very properly and then we will be able to uh, write it down the questions very immediately in that particular lecture plan. Okay, so that's uh, the important strategy for the implementations of the uh, teaching plan along with the lecture plan. Okay, then we can move further the Bloom's taxonomy. But Abhijit sir, you can use back-to-back uh, -back pages also, no problem. It will take only uh, 33 pages for the one subject, isn't it? So it's not very difficult to get the stationary. It's just take a 33 pages if you take a back-to-back -back prints. And if, if you are written down uh, by using your pen, because you have to make some uh, blank spaces in that particular lesson plan, and you can just put that information in the... Second type of specification table is not given by the MSBT, uh, Patak sir. Uh, we have created, uh, means I have created in line to the uh, MSBT specification table. It's for the our understanding, it's not compulsory. But if you created it, uh, definitely it will be useful for us to develop the uh, sectional question paper and to maintain the each and every documents very properly. Okay. So I am not going to... Uh, 
discuss about the Bloom's taxonomy labels, uh, BTL. There are total six labels. The knowledge are nothing but the, you can say it is remember also, that is R label is here. Then understand that is U and apply, that is A. Okay. Analyze, evaluate and create. These are the some action verbs are there. You can use the same action verbs for creating your questions. The next session will be on that particular points. And at last, what are the different teaching strategies? It is nothing but the summary of my today's sessions, isn't it? So if you follow these teaching strategies, I feel that it's not compulsory to you, dear faculty members. I feel that definitely you will be a effective teachers Students will really appreciate your efforts and you will be able to deliver the content very effectively with your students. At last, you will get the better results for your subjects, isn't it? So, I will share the five steps of the teaching strategies. Step number one, the CO, that is the course out. So, dear faculty member, very first thing you have to do before to start your syllabus. Read the course outcomes or your subjects very carefully. Try to get the idea from the course outcomes and you have to explain each and every course outcome to your students. Because once students come to know that, yes, I will get that particular things after studying that particular subject in a whole year. So they will get to know at the beginning of the year, so they will showing their own interest to start the study of that particular course or to start the study of that particular subjects. So it's our responsibility to get, give the knowledge of that particular course outcomes to the, our students. So our first duty is read the course outcomes of our subjects, try to discuss that each and every course outcome with the students. And second and most important step is you have to Divide the syllabus according to COs. Or you can say, if you are maintaining the PH1, and here they have to mention, so you have to mention the relevant COs for each chapter. So we have prepared the teaching plans at the beginning of our um, year, isn't it? Academic year. So it will be help you to divide the syllabus or assign that particular COs, that particular chapters. Yes, CO number one for this chapter number one. CO number three is for chapter number two, likewise. So after reading the COs, you will be able to assign the COs for each and every chapters and try to uh, cover that uh, COs in line with our teaching plans. Now, next, an important step is lecture outcome, or you can say the lesson outcomes or the lesson objectives or lecture objectives. Whenever you are going to deliver your content in the classroom, always always start with your lectures with the objectives or outcomes at the beginning of your lecture just told the tell the students yes dear students at the end of this lectures you will be able to so at the beginning of the lectures students will come to know that yes we are going to learn that particular concepts during this one hour lectures isn't it so dear faculty members this is very effective strategy the lecture outcome is nothing but the outcomes are derived from the Bloom's taxonomy or the questions are derived from the Bloom's taxonomy. So it will help you to assign the homeworks also, isn't it? So always be ready with the lecture outcomes. If you are deliver the lectures to the students, start with the lecture outcomes. If you are start with the lecture outcomes, automatically you will be able to create your own question banks. Already it will be aligned with your course outcomes or the unit outcomes, or you can say the lecture outcomes. Yes, it will be helpful to alignment of your that particular course outcomes with that particular questions. And while creating your question banks, if you have created this question paper profile, keep this thing in your mind. So long answer type of questions, short answer type of questions, and multiple choice of questions. While creating this, uh, things, it will be really helpful to you, isn't it? So, dear faculty members, if you are able to create your own question banks, it will take time, no problem. After completion of that particular lecture, immediately you will click that, yes, this question is very important. Or, or during the delivery of that particular content, you will be get idea, yes, 
one MCQ can be derived from that particular condition. So immediately you have to write it down in the lesson plan. So day by day, you are adding the questions in the lesson plan. It will, at last, it will create a, a good bank. That is the question bank. And already, already it will going to be aligned with the uh, your unit outcome or you can say the learning outcomes of that particular lectures. And ultimately, it will go into the uh, map with the course outcome also. So it will help you to create the sectional paper which are aligned with the course outcomes and the unit outcomes. And at last, give the regular homeworks to the students. And if you have a times now, we have a time as a tutorials. In tutorials, you have to check the homeworks. You have to give the your feedback to the students so that they will be able to minimize their uh, mistakes and able to get the things very properly. So if you follow, at least try to follow uh, the each steps for at least one chapter, then you can see the difference, what you have strategy followed the previously and what strategy now you are following. If you find the different, continue with that particular strategy. Okay. So uh, this is the one of the question paper. Okay. Just uh, I am taking just an example. So you have to uh, map the each and every questions asked in a sectional question paper with the CO and with the BTL, that is Bloom's taxonomy layer. And give it that paper to your uh, subject experts for the moderation if you want, isn't it? So question number one for the uh, 15 marks, but you have to ask for the four questions. Here I, am, I have taken the chemistry paper. Okay, so just for the uh, demonstration purpose. You will come to know how to set the question papers, uh, map with the Bloom taxonomy level. The next lecture, you will get the better idea. I'm not going to talk about this. So these are the different format. Already you have uh, the aware about the formats. Okay. So PH41 is for the uh, first year theory. You have to maintain the PS6 sectional wise. Here in PS6, you have to write it down the out of 40 marks and out of 20 marks and whatever the out of 20 marks, you have to shift it on the uh, PH41 format and PH42 format for the second. Similarly, for the practical, you have to conduct for the 80 marks sectional examination and convert it for the 10 or 20 depending on the subject requirements and transfer it on PH51, PH51 and PH52 formats. Okay. Now, already all these formats are uh, available with the MS between you are already filled that formats. But only thing is that you have to maintain a proper format. You have to maintain a sectional wise format. So it will really help you for the academic monitoring also and for maintaining the academic records for the NBA purpose also. Okay, already the appendix one and appendix two given by the PCI. But remember that for the subjects, those subjects who do not have the field visit, you have to give the marks out of 10 for that particular subjects. And those subjects having the field visit reports, you have to give the marks for the assignment out of 5. So you have to take care about giving the marks to the assignments to the students, particularly the subjects with the field visit report and subjects with without the field visit report. Okay. And most of the formats are self-explanatory. I think there is no need to explain each and every formats. Okay. But for the purpose of more clarifications, I have taken uh, two tables for your experience, uh, for your better understanding. So these are the five subjects from our first year and second year having the assignment as well as the fillings. So pharmaceutics, pharmacognosy and social pharmacy having the 333 assignments and number of field visit given in the PCI document is like that. One assignment for the suitics, two assignments for the cognacy and three assignments, sorry, not assignments, field visit. One field visit for suitics, two field visits for the pharmacognosy, three field visits for the social pharmacy. Similarly, for the CMP, two field visits and for the SCP, one field visit. And this is how the you can uh, distribute the marks for the practical for sectional examination, 10, 10, 10 marks. Here is the one exceptional cases. That is the HAP directly 20 marks. You have to convert it because it does not have the assignment as well as the field visit. And for the pharmacotherapeutics, the same things. Okay. For the pharmaceutical chemistry, biochemistry, and the pharmacology. For the pharmaceutical chemistry, 
pharmacology and biochemistry no field visit so you have to give the assignment marks out of 10 so you have to use the conversion for the 10 marks out of 25 then convert it from the 10 marks by using the rubrics already the rubrics given by the piece okay so this is from my sides if you have any questions you may you are feel feel free to ask okay now session is open for the question and answers all the student teachers you may ask question i am sure they were asking you question while the session was on also but if you have any particular questions to be asked to aragde sir you can definitely ask write in the chat box so that i can ask him or he can also see So if you have any problem, you can uh, reach to me on my email or my WhatsApp also. No issue. We can just ping me. Hmm? Uh, Raghavi sir, you have explained all the formats so nicely that they don't have any questions, I guess. But really, it was uh, explained very well. The question paper profile, the lesson plan, uh, how does the Bloom taxonomy plays a role, and uh, question paper setting. So all these aspects, even I was, I do, I don't teach diploma. I was able to understand it properly. Uh, Power sir, uh, there is no correlation between the COs and marks, but you have to correlate the questions with the COs. Okay, there is no correlation between the course outcomes and marks. How to ask MCQ as per annual paper? That is one question. How to ask MCQ as per annual paper? Now we can't uh, say that as per annual paper. Mm. You can ask as many as MCQ during your class test also or during your uh, sectional examination also. Uh, but we can't correlate with the annual paper because in annual what they ask we we don't know because it is uh, somewhat confidential for us also and for students also. So while uh, creating or while drafting the MCQ for your subjects, uh, stick up to your syllabus, and try to frame the, as many as MCQ. Either you can use the multiple choice questions or you can use the filling the blanks questions or one word answers, but try to draft as many as questions. Definitely it will help you, but I can say that it will be helpful for the annual paper because the, those who are the paper setter, wow, while they are setting the question paper, what is in their mind we can't expect so for that purpose students have to be a extensive readings and for the same purpose we as the teacher we can provide the as many as mcqs to the students depending on our each and every uh, content or you can you can say the each and every sessions uh, yogesh kanadi sir for the plt assignments you can give the 10 marks or 5 marks uh, it's not no matter because it will not going to um, counted in, a, in annual examinations or in sectional examinations. So it is just for the purpose of the understanding of the students. So these assignments are not having the any weightage uh, as far as the P, uh, PCI year 2020 is concerned. Okay, I think uh, now question is over. Please guide about the- Someone is asking, sir, how to maintain the appendix for assignment and field visit record. Now, uh, if your institute have created your own assignment books, uh, then you have to print out for each and every assignments for each and every field visit that appendix. If you are not taking any uh, help of the assignment books available in the market, if the students are writing by uh, on the pages, so just give the soft copy to the students and ask them to take a Xerox or print. They have to uh, attach that particular appendix on that particular assignment. So it is compulsory. Okay. Vishal Karkhele, sir, you have to take the PLT assignments because it is given in the PCI. If the academic monitoring team asks you, just, just show me the PLT assignment, then you have to show it because it is important uh, aspects of our ER 22. Even though it is not having the weightage, but we have to maintain it for the uh, implementations of ER effectively. So I think uh, I have already given the answer how to maintain the appendix. Yeah, appendix. Yeah. Yes, 
uh, if you have any more questions, you can directly contact uh, Dr. Naragde. He would be definitely uh, helpful. Though this session is, uh, this time is over because we have to move away ahead with the next session, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ragde, for such a lucid session. You have really explained all the terminologies used in the MSBT format very well and uh, given with the examples. So I think it, it is quite clear to all the teachers. And if you still have further questions, you can contact Dr. Ragde directly. He has given his contact details also. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you one second. I would now request Dr. Ahmed Dayas, sir, to start sharing his screen. Dr. Dias, are you there? Yes, good afternoon, madam. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Nice to see you. Yeah, I have shared my screen. Can you see the screen? What? No, sir, I'm not able to see the screen. Okay. And you just stop your screen. My screen, okay. Yes. I have allowed multiple counselors. Okay. Now we will be able to see your screen, sir. I can see um, Dr. Ramit Dias screen. Dr. Ramit Dias is our second um, speaker for the day. And he would be also talking about a similar topic as uh, Dr. Aragri has spoken about today. I would introduce you, Dr. Dias, in a few minutes and then you can take over the session, if I may. Dr. RJ Dias has graduated in pharmacy in 1996, completed his post-graduation in 2002 and then PhD in 2008 from Government College Pharmacy, Karad. He has also completed alongside the management studies that is MBA and postgraduate diploma in patent law. So he has empowered himself with management as well as patents. He started his career uh, as a medical representative in Hex Marion and then later on uh, in two years he shifted to academics and he is having around 23 years of teaching experience in academics. He has been associated with different colleges such as MES College of Pharmacy Chipun, um, Satara College of Pharmacy Satara and currently Dr. Dias is working as HOD head of the department of Government College of Pharmacy Karad. Uh, he has around 14 books published, 27 international and 56 national research papers and guided 44 MPharm students and two PhD students. His keen interest in, uh, interests are in drug delivery system, biostatistics, biopharmaceutics and biopharmacokinetics and design of experiments. Dr. Dias, over to you. We are very keen to understand the next topic from you. That is empowering the teachers, mastering the question paper setting. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah. So, good afternoon, dear participants. It is really, we are fortunate to have this online platform made available by DYP University. So, let me first congratulate. Dr. Rakesh Somani, sir, for grabbing the best APTI branch, that is APTI Maharashtra, as an award, and then even for organizing so many seminars for the development of faculty members. I even thank Deepa ma'am for inviting me over here. So, dear participants, for the next one hour, we are going to only think on question paper. So the topic is empowering teacher, mastering question paper setting. And I feel when we as a teachers develop some content, come out with some pedagogical techniques to deliver the content, assessment becomes very, very important so that we can see what 
student learning has taken place. And therefore, question paper setting is very, very important. On which lot much is not talked about. The lacuna is we as a teachers, the student friends, we are interested in taking the MSBT question papers for so many years, making that which questions are coming and how we can prepare the answer for these questions so that I can pass the exam, so that I can get the diploma license. This is what our total thinking process is going on. But if you can see, if you can see that question paper itself is very, very important. And therefore, before starting this session, I just want to ask one question. You can use the chat box because I can see your chat um, here. So I just want you to tell me that why, why this question paper is required, why question paper setting is an important thing, why the assessment is important. Yes, any, any one, two words also you can write about it, that what is the importance of this question papers? Why we should assess the students? Okay. Okay, one, one message is there. Okay, for maintaining GPP, okay. Measuring performance of student. Very nice. Diploma program outcome should be fulfilled. Very, very nice. So, yes, Chetan, Jyoti, Shubham, Ajay, knowledge transfer. Okay, Hyderabad, I don't know. Analyze the depth of knowledge. Okay, good. Make students professional. So nice of you because see, the assessment is the tool in the hands of the teacher, in the hands of the educational institute where we can fathom where actually our teaching learning process is going on. And therefore, assessment as a tool, every teacher should be able to use it effectively. Okay, so let me start with the presentation. See the learning outcomes that have been set for this session. After completion of this session, the learners will be able to explain the importance of assessment in student learning, discuss the important elements in paper setting, which are those important elements, apply Bloom's taxonomy labels in paper setting, and analyze the question paper with respect to Bloom's taxonomy labels, course outcomes and difficulty levels. This is very, very important because any question paper, which is if you are going to set, you should always analyze your question paper or yourself on these three important things. Bloom's taxonomy levels, course outcomes and difficulty level of that question paper. And then you will be able to explain the difficulty index and discrimination index, which is mostly used for framing the MCQs which come into the question paper. And now in NEV ER 2020, we have 20 marks MCQs which have been given. So this, therefore we need to see how we can frame the MCQs effectively, what needs to be thought upon. It is not that, that just we are converting some questions and giving some, um, M, uh, making some ABCD and converting it into MCQs, no. We have to scientifically draft the MCQs also. And therefore, we will be focusing on these five points uh, during the session. And I think you will be able to answer these questions once this session is over. So now, somebody had showed that. that in the answer he has written about program outcomes and very rightly pointed out. See, even though we are going for NBA or not NBA, 
we have to think in the process of the program, diploma in pharmacy, program, bachelor of pharmacy, what outcomes the students are going to achieve after completion of this course. And that is very important. And based on that, we should think of paper setting. So we can see what is the importance. You know, outcome-based education, that framework we have accepted being the signatory. So OBE framework, everybody knows. And there in OBE framework, what first comes is a graduate attributes. What attributes are important in a pharmacist once he becomes a graduate, once he passes his diploma? So those graduate attributes, we need to define what are those graduate attributes that we see into our student who is going to pass out. And based on that, the framing of program outcomes take place. In the document of NBA, already the program outcomes are given and those program outcomes have been taken from graduate at attributes. It has been framed and given to us. Based on these program outcomes, the curriculum needs to be framed. PCA has framed the curriculum and that ready-made curriculum we are using. And maybe in some universities, some part of curriculum can be designed by themselves. So curriculum, once it is designed, once it is given, now the onus comes on the teachers to deliver the content, prepare the content first. So preparation or the content framing, content preparation is the first part because we are going to deliver the curriculum to the students through our We are going to deliver the content which we have framed as far as the curriculum is concerned. Once the contents are there, we have to use some suitable pedagogy. How we are going to deliver the content. And once that is delivered, once the pedagogy is utilized, the we are going to use or develop the content for achieving the course outcomes. outcomes. And how we are going to see, we are going to assess whatever you have taught from the curriculum using the various pedagogies and you are going to assess it. From the assessment, we are going to come to know whether our course outcomes have been achieved or not. Through the assessment, we are able to come to see whether the program outcomes have been achieved or not. So CO attainment, PO attainment can be possible only through the assessment. And how we can do the assessment? Assessment can be done by bringing the question paper. Or you can say the assessment is of various different types, but question paper becomes also important because we are giving much importance towards the written exam. So question paper comes, okay? So you can see the importance of a question paper because if a nicely designed question paper will be there, then and then only it is possible to achieve the course outcomes and program outcomes of a given curriculum. Or otherwise, if question paper is not designed properly, unreliable, and, and therefore designing a question paper is very, very important thing. I hope you have understood because it is the question paper that helps us to assess the learning of the student that helps to calculate the course attainment, course outcome attainment, program outcome attainment, and therefore question paper designing is very, very important. Okay. Now, you know that in the teaching learning process, what to teach, you prepare, you develop the content and that, that is what you decide from the curriculum by developing the content, what to teach, how to teach. You teach by using some pedagogical techniques. So how to teach and then how to assess because student learning can be known only through assessment and therefore this assessment is important. So three things which are important as a teacher is content development, using a right pedagogy and assessing the student's performance. These three are important in teaching learning process. Now, once we come towards the assessment, what strategy we should follow? Program outcomes have been already been given. There are some 11 program outcomes which have been given by NBA. 
But once the program outcomes are given, what about the competencies? The next step, which has not been done for the pharmacy, in engineering it has been done. The competencies have been defined. But in our PCI ER 2020 syllabus, yes, the competencies have been given. But here we need to see that if it is a PO1, what are the competencies that we can design from this PO1? If you want to achieve PO1, what competencies we can look after into the student? And if we can design competencies, then the program indicators, performance indicators, which are the pro performance indicators that we can see so that they can define the competency. If I say this is the competency present in my student, what are the indicators by which we can, I can say? So performance indicators needs to be framed and then comes the assessment. Okay, so this is a strategy by which you can go for a proper uh, assessment. Let us forget about all these things. This is an ideal thing which I'm telling you, but by this way, you can connect the POs to assessment. You can, whatever assessment you're going to do, that can be connected to POs through this strategy. Now, if you come to the program outcomes, the 12th pass student comes into the pharmacy education and we send them out into the market as a pharmacist after two years course or maybe after four years course, uh, degree course also. And the POs, we say he becomes a P pharmacist because PO1 tells that he is a He's having pharmacy knowledge. He's able to use this modern tool, uses the PO2 tells. PO3 say, says he's having leadership skills. He's having a professional identity. Okay, because he's a registered pharmacist. He is going to follow the pharmaceutical ethics, communications, pharmacist and society, environment and sustainability, lifelong learning. So these are the nine program outcomes given for diploma and for degree, we have 11. So you can see these nine program outcomes, which are important, which we can see, this can only come through the assessment, but you can see whatever we are designing the question paper, this is for the pharmacy knowledge. This is for the modern tool and usage, but if you can see most of the things, of program outcomes, they have not been checked or connected through our question papers because we give importance to the written exams and written exams are there on PO1 and PO2. We go for pharmacy knowledge, that's all. What about other POs? How we are going to assess them? Okay, let's just, just I'm making this point to you because we are going to focus on question paper setting. So I will just not go into the details over here, but let me tell you that connecting the POs to assessment is very, very important. You can see every program outcome can be divided into the competencies. Then we can further, every competency can be divided into performance indicators, and then we can assess it. Assess through the examinations, end semester examinations, sessional examinations, but it is not possible that all program outcomes can be assessed by this. And therefore, we have to go for the practical examinations. We have to go for the assignments. So assignment is a very, very important tool into the hands of a teachers because you need to give the assignment. You have to develop the rubric to check it. And that should be a part of an assessment. So rubrics needs to be developed. You need to even give some projects and you have to assess the projects through the rubrics. So while doing the assessment, it's not only the question paper that for the written examination, but it is a practical examination, how you conduct, how you conduct your assignments and you check it through the rubrics. That also is very, very important. And that's why you can connect each and every PO to assessment. If you can frame the rubrics, if you can take the examinations or practicals very thoroughly and scientifically, then these things can be connected well. Okay. Now, the question which I had asked, why we want to do the assessment? Assessment is for gathering the information in the form of a data. Whether the student has understood or not understood the concept which I have told him. 
what prior knowledge they are having so we are going to see so knowledge students knowledge and skills about the topic that we can see through assessment we can measure students conceptual knowledge and skill level we can judge the student achievement how much he has performed assign a grade and even this is a method of measuring teachers accountability if the students are not performing well into your subject then something we are accountable for that so these are the important things which we look after which we look from the assessment okay i will just skip all these things but this you should remember that it is not only the question paper it's a homework it's a test the interviews the discussions oral reports presentations instructor observations these are all important part of assessment tools along with the question papers which are used for written tests okay now you might also be knowing i will just make a point and i will leave from here uh, from this slide see the assessment tools are different for different formative summative assessment objective assessment and subjective assessment so those tools should be different if you so it all depends upon your aim what aim you have you have gone and seen the concept a teach a part of concept way student and you need to find out whether that concept has been understood or not or during that lecture then you can go for the formative formative assessment if something has not been answered that means they have not understood so i can just repeat that part i can make them understand so that is what the your aim was to make a formative assessment summative assessment sessional examinations and um, annual examination gives you this objectives you are using a mcq type of questions fill in the blanks and all that because your aim is to know whether they can recall whether they can apply something and so objective and subjective sometimes you need to know whether that skill can be performed by him or not so the assessment tools are different in case of different uh, goal of assessment okay now let us move further structure and quality of assessment see you need to see that your question paper designing only should not be that whether the memory recall is happening it's not only a test for memory recall if you want to assess a student thoroughly written examinations alone are not sufficient i already told you you need to see how they are performing in the practical examinations how they are performing in assignments how they are because you need to develop some rubrics for doing because written examinations are not sufficient why that also i am going to tell you wide range of assessment methods are there and you need to use most of these methods okay so this is what the if you want to bring the quality in assessment you need to stick to all these things okay now for assessment plans whenever you want to assess you need to align your assessment with the learning outcomes of the course what are the course outcomes that have been designed whether my assessment is aligned to it if it is not aligned then there is no use of that question paper because you might be uh, checking only one assess uh, course outcome other three is you have missed into your question paper what is the use of that type of assess okay so you should align it your level of student that has been achieved or not through the written examination we are just seeing whether the, he can re memorize remember the things then that is he has gone to that level only if you can take the bloom's taxonomy levels you have to see if it is expected that he can review the prescription and dispense no i am taking examples of community pharmacy today in the presentation okay um but I, all can follow it so if we want to make a pharmacist who can review the prescription then he should be able to he is going he is evaluating the prescription he is going to the level 5 so if he is going to level 5 how i am going to assess it that we need to think and which assessment method needs to be adapt, adapted for which co cognitive level that also we should understand okay so if you can see bloom's taxonomy for assessment design bloom's taxonomy i think everybody knows bloom's taxonomy level so yes you can just use your check box and tell me various levels which are given by bloom okay just use your check box
yes hope you are giving the answer yes sir they are giving the answers are you a3 levels okay so remember apply create yes correct so remembering is the first level by which you can go through just i was just joining from my mobile also to see the chat box okay, okay. so you can see remembering understanding applying analyzing evaluating and creating these are the various levels that has been told and we say remembering the first level btl1 btl1 so you can see a pyramid where you can see remembering is the first level at the bottom of the pyramid that is remembering then understanding applying analyzing evaluating and creating six and you know which are higher which gives you a higher order thinking and lower order thinking also the one by which you can remember understand and apply that becomes lower order thinking skill but if you go from analyze evaluate and create then you go for higher order thinking skill and that is what is important for us as a teachers to be given to the students that is what is important higher order thinking skills now you can see maybe in the written examination it is possible to go from remembering understanding and applying if you can see the specification table you can see r u a that's all because from written examination it is not so possible maybe sometimes it is possible to go for analyzing but for evaluating and creating it is not possible and therefore if you want to go for this higher order thinking skills then it is where you can design means you can just give the assignments you can do it from the projects you can go for the practicals by which you can judge those things whether they are able to do this okay so whether they are getting a good marks in the theory it is immaterial because we are able to see whether they have the lower order thinking skills a person with a higher order thinking skills the practicals are important and how we conduct the practicals how we um, give the marks to the students during the practicals is really a debatable one because in the practical the students are supposed to go towards the highest level btl level 6 or 5 and if we have to judge this our question paper in the practical is very very important that one should have this okay anyways so bloom's taxonomy level is very very important and we are going to align our question paper to the btl levels which is very very important okay now you can see btl level 1 remember it what ability to recall the information you can see your question paper of msbt for diploma it is the btl 1 the most of the question paper is on this because they are just going to recall the methodology and procedures they are going to know know the dates they can recall the information so the questions which will start from define so and so list and list various things state recall identify all these comes the questions comes in btl level 1 and what we are expecting from the students they can remember they can recall lower order thinking skill recall and you can see this this is the remembering second understanding if some students have understood something they will be able to describe or explain or they will be able to discuss the things about it so all the questions which are starting from describe so and so explain this method discuss about this thing then this all the things are coming to understanding btl level 2 understanding 
The BTL labels are used for framing the learning outcomes the same way BTL labels are used for drafting the question paper and therefore you have to understand this BTL labels. Now third, apply. When you ask the student to calculate something, if in my community pharmacy, I said calculate a BMI index. Means they know that there is a formula of calculating the BMI and if they can use the calcula, use the formula to calculate BMI and then give some inference that he is within the limits of BMI, then we can say you have applied the knowledge for calculating BMI. So when you examine something, when you experiment something, when you determine something, when you calculate something, you are going to a higher level from one, two, two, three, VTL level three. So you are applying some. So apply the Newton's law and do this experiment. When I say like that, then it becomes third, VTL level three, and that is what is expected. That is what is expected. So our question paper setting, we should not only frame the questions which are going for BTL level one. If I can say, because we are going to see our, our question paper, because I have taken the question paper of community pharmacy so that we can just go through the question paper and see which levels we have designed the question paper. You can see all the MCQs are coming from BTL level one only. Is it that the MCQs or the objective type questions cannot be framed from applying level? or understanding level. If we start to work scientifically on this process, then a good question paper can be set. And therefore we are here to understand these BTL levels, applying, then analyzing. When you, some things are given to you, and when you break down it, that complex problem into parts, or you establish some relationship, when you classify, Yes, this is a good prescription, which I can say, which I can say, this is a good prescription. Why? Because whatever the steps required, the legal requirements of the prescription are there, those have been followed. But this is not a good prescription because so many things have not been followed into this. A student, if he is able to say this is bad and this is good, means he is classifying into this too. He is going to giving some inference. He is selecting from the prescription which one is the best prescription as far as the legal confirmation is there. Then we say he is able to analyze and therefore he uh, the questions will come analyze or review the question paper, evaluate this question paper. Yes, here it will be like analyze the question paper, analyze. So when you analyze something, then you come to the BTL number four. Likewise, you will see, we'll see that you go to the BTL level six, creating, no, evaluating is a five. So whenever you are going to take some decision, critically review something, if you can judge something, then you say that you are, it is possible to evaluate. Then comes the creating, you are going to formulating something. You have come up with a formula to prepare some cosmetic and you are formulating it. That means it is possible for you to formulate a formulation. Is it? So you have created something. So that is a BTL level six. And therefore, we have to see how we can check various BTL levels. If you want to check whether the student, because we, I have already told, these are the higher order thinking skills which can be imparted into the students. So if they can just recall the thing, understand or apply. So these are the things which are called as a lower order thinking skill. And we can use the assessment method where the fixed hour examination of three hours or two hours or one hour examination we have given. So in those cases, we can just use these three fixed hour, end semester, sessional examination we can see. But if you want to assess the 
progress of the student, whether he can able to think, create something new, he can evaluate or analyze the given situation, then we need to give them the course projects, mini project, minor project, assignments, and everything needs to be done through the rubrics. And then that is what, so higher order thinking skill can be assessed through by giving them the projects. And the lower order thinking skill can be assessed to the written examination which you are going to take. So you can see this difference and therefore the question paper setting for the written examination will be for this RUA, most sometimes A of analyzing also, not for diploma level. But these three will come. But if you go for the practical examination, I think you should also frame the questions by which the students can go for A, analyzing and evaluating. Then only you should see whether your students have achieved that higher order thinking skills or not. Okay. I think you understood the assessment methods differ when we want to go through this Bloomstack's anomalies. So we have the assessment plans that we have to assess align our questions with the course learning outcomes. Not only that, we have to see from the question paper whether all the learning outcomes are tested or not. If your COs are five and if your question paper is carrying only one or two question COs only, I'm not talking about sessional examination. I'm talking about the question paper of uh, annual examination where all the COs needs to be given, um, should be tested into that. Overall weightage of each Bloom's learning level. That is also important. How much weightage has been given and whether that weightage has been followed or not during the question paper and not only that, which weights assessment method has been used and what is the level of its difficulty. That is important. So these four things are important while you are planning for a designing of a question paper. Keep in mind the course outcomes. Align your question paper with the course outcomes. Align your question papers with the Bloom's taxonomy levels. Check whether all the course outcomes are being tested in your question paper or not. And what is the difficulty level of your question paper? If these four things, four elements, I ask you, which are the elements you are going to tell us? So these are the four important elements when you are going to design a question paper. Alignment with course outcomes, whether all learning outcomes have been tested or not. Bloom's levels, overall weightage, and which assessment weight method along with the difficulty level of that has been followed. Four elements always to remember when you are planning for your question paper design. Now, setting a question paper, I told you, these four elements. In few of the cases, even the performance indicators taken from program outcomes are also mapped, which is a very higher uh, uh, thing. Okay, so that I'm not going to take, but at least these things, four things are important for us and that we should see. So I'm just going to take the question paper of summer 2023 community pharmacy and we are going to discuss uh, so that we can understand. We are not here to critique, make the critical uh, comments on the question paper. We are, we are here to understand that whether these four things have been followed or whether we should be uh, we should be able to follow these things in the further question papers, maybe of our sessionals, maybe of our um, annual examinations, okay? So setting question paper, you can see this. I have given you the question number one. So this format you should always apply into your sessional examination also. Question number, questions, mark. How many, for, how many marks it is? CO, which CO is covered from this question and what BTL level the question is, okay? Now, the first question is define prescription, explain the various steps for proper handling of prescription of prescription for dispensing of medicines. Let me tell you, this is five mark question. Define is BTL level one. Explain is the real level two because understanding defined means he is just remembering. Explain means he is understood and he is going to explain. So BTL level two. When we have BTL level one and two, you can take the highest level that is BTL level two. 
or otherwise i would say that whenever you are coming up with a question the hc to eat the label should be should not be mixed if you are mixing no problem you have to take that it is the highest btl level to which is there what about the co the course outcomes i have just mentioned it over here that the course outcomes of community pharmacy and management the first one is described establishment legal requirement and effective administration of community pharmacy second professionally handle prescriptions and dispense medic medications so here we are uh, telling the handling of prescription it comes in co2 therefore co2 is taken over here okay now you can see one question number 1b the third co is counsel patients and fourth is a basic health screening performed okay so this four you remember i will not flash these four outcomes on every slide only thing is you can see you can just take the question paper of this one and see explain the stages explain comes in btl level 2 and therefore this is two course outcome is a patient counseling counsel the patients with co is 3 so likewise if you can go and see the question number 1 there were there are you have to write some three questions but the questions given are more so you can see question number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 questions were given and you are going to do this 1a define prescription explain we have seen already define otc medicine discuss btl level 2 so if you can see all the questions here the cos are 2 3 3 3 1 1 1 if you can come on the btl levels it is 2 2 2 so all this seven questions which are covered in question number 1 are covering the btl level 2 and they are having the co where 1 3 and 2 all are covered so these were the seven questions given into i am not going to read all the questions okay so you can see this now question number 2 if you can see the first question is define sop and list the benefit you are listing you are defining means it is a btl level 1 describe btl level 2 and list the common dispensing errors along with what are the strategies to minimize there are the strategies which if they come from their mind then it's okay you can even go for btl 3 but these are the strategies which are given in the book and i am going to write it from the book means i am just going to recall this and therefore for at the most you can go for the btl level 2 you are just discussing those strategies that's it okay so co2 over here co11 over here so btl levels we can see in all this one you can see describe describe okay um in list define here to give two examples how can it be corrected so it comes in btl2 and you can see give the formula for bim calculation draw the bmi versus weight chart so you are going to draw and for that reason it is coming to the apply or otherwise in all the questions you will find we are at btl level 1 or btl level 2 that's all now you can see the question number 2 remaining part you can see btl level 1 now it's a btl level 2 mistaken because it's a discuss and you can see legal requirements to set up a explain and explain so you can see cos so if you can see question number 1 question number 2 we are in question number 2 at btl level 3 for one question or otherwise we are framing the questions from btl 1 and btl 2 and most probably from 1 2 3 only it should be framed for this one now if you can come to the mcqs or that is a objective type question that is a question number 3a you can see all the questions they are covering only btl level 1 btl level 1 all the questions 20 questions you can see all the questions are from btl level 1 you can see the btl level 4 there are two questions uh, that uh, they have been used and maybe in question number 2 also btl uh, co4 was there or otherwise mostly it is co3 that has been covered co1 has been covered more okay so this is what the total question paper is and if you analyze this question paper based on because i have said we have to analyze it in terms of 1 2 3 4 okay so we can see the first analysis which we can do is btl wise question distribution btl wise 
Quotient distribution. So you can see this BTL level one questions. You can see BTL level one, fifty eight percent of the question paper is sticking to BTL level one. Thirty nine percent questions are at BTL level two, and thirty three percent is sticking. There is only one question is present. Fifteen questions with BTL two. 22 questions with BTL one. So based on question, this percentage has been taken. Not in uh, based on the marks. We can even use the BTL wise question distribution based on marks also. Okay. So you can see this percentage. So we can go for this. You can see this. Now, if you can see course outcome wise question paper distribution, course outcome wise. So you will find CO one, forty two percent of the question paper is on CO one. CO two, it is a fifteen percent. CO three, it is thirty three percent, and CO four, it's a ten percent. But you can see here that all the course outcomes have been covered. So you can see here on BTL level wise, all three are there, but BTL level one has been given more. But BTL level three has been done very less that we can uh, review from this. But if you can see all four of course outcomes have been seen. So we have seen two elements how they are covered into our question paper. Now third one is a like that of all the course outcomes have been covered. That is third and fourth one is difficulty level. So difficulty level we need to do more analysis. So it has not been done over here. Okay, but let us go towards the specification table. Given for CMP two two two, so you can see here. This is a chapter wise; it is given, not CO wise. So you can even prepare a specification table CO wise also. But here it is given. You can just see. Now you can see. Remember, forty forty marks are there for the remember. Thirty-five marks have been given for understanding level, and twenty-three marks have been given for the A level. So, what is missing is the question papers which which has been set. We have seen only for um, three mark question has come on apply level. That is what my understanding is. So, the apply level has not been effectively used in this question paper. Most of the paper has gone into R and U level. It's okay, but if this is given, this is given that the question should be of apply level, then this should have been covered more into the question paper. And therefore, I request you all to use this apply level questions, apply level questions into your sessional examination also. And if the question paper is set in the final according to the provided specification table by the MSPT, then more and more will stay. At least twenty-three marks questions should be of apply level. Okay. So based on this specification table, you need to frame remember level. So when you go for remember level, if you say define this question, define. Enlist this, then it becomes the remember label. Understanding when they are explaining, discussion, describing something about that, that becomes the understanding label. And when it comes to apply labels, they need to apply the concept to solve something. So solve, prepare, maybe preparing a cash. Flow or the preparing a budget, preparing something like that. Applying this one, if they are going to do something, if they are going to calculate something, then the questions of apply level are going to come, and that we need. You may ask the students of designing a pamphlet, designing a pamphlet by having that. No, whatever the techniques they have understood, so that the over the counter maybe of some disease uh, you are going to talk about. If your patient has come for this, apply, and 
design one leaflet for this. You will go towards the higher level. That type of questions needs to be framed if you want to go actually achieve the specification table. Okay. Now, moderation. When the moderation of a question paper needs to be done, you, you can just understand this, whatever this format is given. Okay, I have put all the questions into this format, but whenever you want to set a question paper, the question paper, you have to come up with question number, the question what you're going to frame, but it should be what marks it will have, what CO it is going to be mapped, and what BTL level you are going to. So how many COs you are going to cover? If it's an annual question paper, all four COs or all five COs. So you need to determine that this question should be from CO4, this question should be from CO3 and that I'm going to pro, but CO3, I'm going to take it for BTL level what? One, two or three. If I'm going to frame CO3 and BTL level three, that should be in my mind and then I should go for the question. If it's a BTL level two, I will go for the questions which are from apply or calculate, determine, okay, design, like that it will come. So that will be if you are going for BTL3. So likewise, your format should have this course outcome and BTL level. You come up how many questions you need to frame for BTL level 1, BTL level 2 and BTL level 3. And let me tell you that in case of the objective question also, if, if somebody wants to know how to frame the MCQs, you just go through the 10th CBSC board question paper of science, you will come to know all the MCQs of one mark. I means objective, you will find there you can even go to apply level for one mark. Or when they go for the higher, they give for two marks also. So like that it is. So you need to understand that what BTL level you are going to follow for that, which CO you are going to cover. And then you need to frame. And framing of the question is very, very important, uh, very, very easy. It is because if you see all the things like maybe, uh, see, this type of things you can find. You can see if you want to frame the question paper from, for understanding what, what are the things you are going to use. Based on this, you can, there are so many questions which are given on that. You can just, uh, it is called as a leaf, question leaf. But from the internet also, you can get, based on that, you can frame those. Okay. So we have seen how to frame and exactly how, what should be the format. The format should contain CO, format should contain the BTL labels. Then only you can go for this. Okay. Now, when you are moderating, because in every institute, there should be a moderation committee or moderation, moderation of each question paper set in the sessional needs to be done. The question paper should be set by saying the question is given. RUA means or BTL level should be there, which CO has been mapped. And based on that, the same question, the question paper should be signed by a moderator. And he has to check whether that BTL level three apply. Yes, the question paper is, uh, question frame is okay or not. Question paper framed is okay or not. So he has to check, the moderator has to check the BTL levels. And based on MSBT, well, this one framing, whether those BTL levels have been followed or not. If the question paper is more concentrating on here and no apply is given, then you need to may ask the question paper setter to make that change because A-level questions are missing. So this can be done. This can be practiced at the level of the institute also. And therefore, every question which, need, which is set in the institute needs to be Say, given to the exam department and the moderator has to moderate it and moderator sign should also be present on the question paper. The moderator question, question paper needs to be utilized for the assessment because if your question paper is wrong, then maybe your outcomes may not be properly checked. If your sessional exam is there, in all the three sessional examination, CO4 has not, no question is there. You are not tested your student for CO4. That is not good. Okay, so always remember this, that whenever you are framing or setting a question paper, at that time, you should always check uh, for this BTL level, COs, and frame the question paper. It's for our own good that 
the good question paper should be framed and that should be moderated by the person who is a senior professor who knows these things can moderate that paper. Okay, so during moderation also COs and BTL should also be checked as far as the specification table and then the moderator should sign the paper and then the same paper can be submitted to the exam department for conducting the exam. Okay, now let us move further. Uh, now the question comes is now MCQs because even I said that the difficulty level of the question is very important. Two things need to be kept in mind. The first one is it is not that in objective type questions you can cannot go for U and A only R can be framed. It needs practice. It needs to understand. There needs to be a question. Uh, there needs to be um, the workshops conducted in various places where we have to come up with a MCQs which will go for RU and A level. Not only for MCQs, also for other questions, also question two and question one. And that question bank should be there, developed with the NMSBT from where the question paper can be set. That is very important. Or otherwise, the question paper which the students are facing and neither the students are bothered about BT levels, they don't know in the colleges. The teachers are not framing the question papers on that level. And even means that becomes a, a problematic thing that the levels are not seen and therefore framing is not proper and therefore even the outcome cannot be measured well. That is important. Okay. So you need to think. So MCQs can be framed at three levels also. R, U, A. But today I'm not going to discuss on that. The one thing which I want to discuss that the fourth element, that is what is the difficulty level? Difficulty level. Difficulty level of the objective question or the um, MCQ, I can say. So how I'm going to find it out? Objective level. So when we go for that, you will come to know that Difficulty index is very, very important. And when you have to determine the difficulty level of test items, a major called as difficulty index is used. How to calculate this difficulty index? It is not um, this one because see, maybe uh, every time when you are completing your chapter, frame few questions and find out its difficulty index also, that's going to help you. Now you can see difficulty index is the difficulty level of a question which you have framed and how you can do you can come up with a question or the question paper give it to the students to call uh, to solve and then find out where how many students or proportion of students who have answered the test item accurately now if for example two questions were given of mcq based a b c d and you can see the question one there is not a single student has given a as a choice, three students have given B as a choice and C, 24 students have given C choice and this is a correct answer. The 24 students have a correct answer and D is given only by three. But whereas you can see the question number two, only 12 students have given the correct answer. By knowing this only, you can come to know that which one is a difficult one, which, which is a difficult Question, can you tell me? Question one is a difficult, is, is difficult, or question two is difficult. Just use your chat box and tell me whether the question one is difficult or question two is difficult. Question two is difficult. Yes, Preeti, Urbila. Yes, Ajay, Chetan, Sunita. Shivani. So, Ashwini. So, you can see here that question number two itself can tell because 12, only 12 students have given, but we have to calculate the difficulty index of this question. What has happened in question one? 24 students have given. So, difficulty index is very easy to calculate. Difficulty index is equal to number of students who have correctly. Um, chosen the alternative divided by number of students who have appeared for the examination. Okay, that gives you difficulty index. So we can 
even calculate the difficulty index for that. So students answered correctly divided by number of students appeared can you. So you can see in the first case, you will find that the 24 divided by, yes, it is 30 students because there are 30 students totally are there. So 24 divided by 30, roughly it comes to 0. 0.8. So we have the difficulty index of 0. 0.8. No, no, it is not 0. 0.8. We can say it is as a 80% uh, or 0. 0.8, I can say 0. 0.8. Okay. Now for second, the same 30 students are there only 12 people are able to do it. So it is something coming. It is around less than this one. It is a 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4. So we have calculated the difficulty index by using this formula. So difficulty index is 0.8. Okay, or 80% of the students have calculated this one, or here it is a 40% of the students. We have done it correctly. So a rough rule of thumb says that item difficulty is more than 0.75%, then it is an easy item. And if the difficulty level is less than 0.25, then it is a difficult item. So you need to find out the question which you have framed. We cannot make the question back like this only. We have to frame the questions. Therefore, every institute should come together, have a workshop of your own faculty, frame the questions and give it to your students and find out maybe 10 questions of biochemistry have been framed and then ABCD has been given. And then you have to come. You found out the difficulty index. The one which is very highly difficult or the one which is going very easy. I think both, both should not be applied because we should have the question or otherwise you can even think that few questions because see in a question paper, it should be like that. That few questions should be for the rankers whose difficulty level should be high. And there should be few questions which are very, very easy. Why? Because the, there are the students who are low scorers. We are we need to take care of, they should be passed into the exam. And therefore, some questions should be for those people who can easily pass the passing. There should be for the rankers so that they can think on that question. Their difficulty level should go up. That type of difficulty index you need to check while framing your question paper. Now, we have seen what is difficulty index. Same way, the discriminatory index is also there. So discrimination index means what? It refers to how the assessment differs or differentiate high and low scorers. There are two st many students who can have high score and low scores also. So we, if my question can differentiate between high score and low scorer, then I can say the discrimination index of my question is good. Okay, so you can see high performing student would select the correct answer and low performing student should correct should choose incorrect answer. Then only you can see if they are more intelligent or they have perform, uh, performing well, studying well, therefore they are able to. So your question difficulty is moderate, but your question is so good. The options which you have given are, these are called as a discriminators. Those are framed very well. Therefore, the low scoring performing students are not possible to score in that question. Okay. So you can determine the discrimination index by subtracting the number of students in the lower group who have got the item correct from the number of students in the upper group who got the item correct. And then you are going to divide this number of students in each group. I will show you the table and then we will calculate there so that you can even uh, know the discrimination index. Okay. Now these are the 10 students. Yes, these are the 10 students. Okay. Your question paper, you have taken a quiz into a classroom and this quiz which you have conducted, Asif has scored 90% while Tonya has scored 40%. Okay, now you can see this. Now you can see this. What has been done once the scoring sheet is prepared, you have to arrange it in a descending order. Descending order. Highest scorer will come at top and the lower score will go down. So likewise, from the score, we have to just prepare a chart and do it. And then you have to write 
question 1 2 3 three questions were framed and they were tested so one tells you that this is the correct answer zero tells you that it is a wrong answer and one tells that it is the correct answer okay so 90% scoring was done by us so asip is at number 1 sam jil like this it has been come okay so we have so now if i want to calculate the discrimination index then what i am going to do i am going to form two groups so upper five 10 people are there so upper five and lower five upper five and lower five upper five and lower five so upper five how many people have given right answers you can check for question 1 1 2 3 4 no he has not given a right answer so out of five we have four people who have given right answer so four for lower 1 2 3 4 so lower we have four so now you can see di is equal to upper group scoring done by upper group and scoring done by lower group divided by divided by number of students in each group in each group this is what the formula is so upper group you know, from 1 to 5 there were four people who have scored so 4 minus lower it is also 4 divided by the number of each students in a group there are five in a group so this is become 0 divided by 5 which is equal to yes it's a zero so discrimination index calculated for question number 1 is a zero same way you can calculate the discrimination index for the question number 2 you can see from higher this one 1 2 3 4 5 the score is zero so di is equal to zero minus lower it's a minus 3 divided by 5 and this tells you it is going somewhere minus 0.6 the score is going minus in a minus means the lower scorers have given the right answer rather than this that means there is a score there is something wrong in the question that you can find out the same way you can see the question 3 if you can calculate this one this becomes 5 or 5 you have given right answer 5 minus 1 divided by 5 which is equal to 4 divided by 5 which is equal to 0.8 so discrimination for question 3 index is showing 0.8 so like this you need to calculate the discrimination index of the questions which you have framed okay now you can see this so what has happened what we have done we have calculated the correct group this is upper group and lower group number of people who have said is 4 lower group 4 4 minus 4 divided by 5 has given 0 as a answer now question number 2 is 0 they have correctly given 3 i have given so point Uh, this point minus point six is a discrimination index, and here you can see in the question number three point eight is the discrimination index which we have got. So higher the discrimination, better is the question framed. Better, better is the question framed. But you can see from the these people we have even framed the this difficulty. The index also has been calculated for question one. It is a point eighty, point thirty, and point sixty. What we have seen. what we have seen higher the difficulty index it's a easy question okay so based on the you know the discrimination index you know the difficulty index tell me right in the chat box which question is a good question in your view question number 1 question number 2 or question number 3 write it in the chat box write it in the chat box which is the okay arshad says question 3 why they he says everybody says it is a question number 3 why it is because the discrimination is good point 8 higher the discrimination better is the question then point 6 is it difficulty so it is a moderately moderately difficult see point 6 question there is some a b c d whatever it is some option is wrong into this or the question is having some problem therefore it is showing minus therefore you have to remove this question this question you have to choose and this question is not possible to discriminate it's easy but it is not able to discriminate that means the a b c d alternatives needs to be reframed 
replay because they are not able to. Everybody is saying, means going for right answer, others are not good discriminators. That needs to be understood. For this, there need to be one another lecture to uh, come and uh, see this. But at least I think I was able to tell you regarding how once you set the question, how you can check it on to your students and find out its difficulty index and discrimination index so that you can choose the good questions. And this question bank should be of a good questions. Then and then only you are able to frame a good question paper. That is what I want to say. Okay. I, I hope that you have understood how you can utilize this discrimination index and difficulty index while framing the question paper. Okay. So that's all. At this end, what I can say is you can ask the questions, but the, what we had done in learning outcomes, those learning outcomes have been achieved. I think you will be able to explain now what is the discrimination index and what is the um difficulty index that was the last uh, learning outcome was the first learning outcome that how uh, we are or you can just we can go to the first slide okay we can go to the first slide and see whether you have understood that based on that you can just ask me the question so you can see this importance of assessment in student learning because without assessment it is not possible for us to judge the performance of the student how they are performing in the class out of the class at the end of the year discuss the important elements i think i have made it clear all the four elements you are also you, uh, i have told you how to apply the bloom's taxonomy labels in paper setting and even how you can analyze your question paper with respect to COs and difficulty levels and I have even told you what is difficulty no. index and discrimination yes. index, how they can be used to yeah, check yeah. your like question that. paper, whether it has been having uh, a good questions or not. Okay. I think that is what I can. So I can take a few questions if uh, are there any, or otherwise we can end the session here. Yeah. Dr. Dias, definitely you explained all these points which you had uh, written on the first slide as learning outcome for all the teachers. And uh, they were posting questions earlier as well. And now also they are posting some questions. So we can take these questions. Yeah, one question is there how to develop the rubrics for CPM subject. Uh, rubrics already I had covered this uh, in one of my sessions. Maybe Chetan, you can uh, connect me afterwards. I can, um, uh, means uh, rubrics development also can be taken as one of the sessions afterwards somewhere we can see. Right now it may not be uh, possible to take all of the rubrics, but surely I will share you the rubrics which can be taken for CPM subject, yeah. True. So it has really very well explained right from the BTL levels to how to map with CO, how to map the CO with question paper, what are the, discrimination index and difficulty index, et cetera. What is the distribution of the marks, how it should be done. Everything is explained really well by Daya, sir. Still anyone having any questions can post the questions in the chat back box. I think no more questions. Yes, we can end now. I have already posted the questionnaire along with the feedback form in the chat box. So if anyone, uh, please go through it. This link will be on for next one hour so that we can easily answer the questions. Mm -hmm. I can still see 152 participants in the participants. So you can go through the link, answer the questions, and you will get the certificates within next seven days.
Yes, Shalini Madam has said, sir, for diploma level, URA is sufficient. For written examination, it's a URA only followed. Other things also for diploma level, you can go for higher levels in during the practicals. Uh, you can develop the rubric and go for higher levels also. Yes. Yeah, but for written exam, it is a URA, RUA. These are the three levels which we can achieve. Oh. I don't see any more questions to Raya, sir. Yes, yes. Then we can end the session. Uh, not before thanking you, sir. We will not end the session <laughs> before thanking you. So I would like to propose the vote of thanks. First of all, right from bottom of my heart. I would like to thank both the speakers for today's two sessions, Dr. Tayas as well as Dr. Aragade, uh, who accepted our invitation and uh, really gave, gave a very, very informative sessions to the diploma teachers. And that was the aim of this uh, webinar, which was uh, conceptualized by the president of uh, APTI. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rakesh Somani, sir. Uh, I really thank uh, D.Y. Patel University School of Pharmacy as well as Somani, sir, for giving me this opportunity to be a host of, for this webinar. Uh, I also appreciate the idea by the of the Capacity Building Forum of APTI, which will definitely come out with such sessions in uh, uh, time to come. And as uh, uh, Daya said, said that, you know, he will be, he would like to explain the other things also in the other sessions. Everything cannot be covered in a single session. So we will definitely invite you, sir. And I'm sure you will take the uh, I mean, invitation again from our side. I would like to thank the APTI forum for, uh, you know, giving me this opportunity and uh, giving this such a lovely session for all the participants here to come. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Burande, who was my teacher and who is the mentor of this capacity building uh, forum of APTI Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. Rakesh Sovani, sir, would you like to say something? Uh, yeah, so just to conclude, thank you so much, uh, uh, Aragade sir, as well as Dias sir. As usual, you have been a great support uh, to the APTI Maharashtra team as far as the knowledge uh, sharing process is concerned. Uh, thank you so much. And yes, as you said rightly, we are going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably in Satara, we are planning one more session in uh, days to come. Uh, so we will invite you again there. Uh, and let's have this knowledge enrichment process as a continuous part of it. Thank you so much, both of you once again. Yeah, ma'am, you can close. Shall we end the session? Participant, yeah. uh, answer the questionnaire so that you will get the certificates from our side. Thank you very much for attending the participants.